Hello everyone, I'm Dan York along with Doc Dockerty, the City Manager for the City of Garden City. We want to talk about the November 6, 2018 general election in Garden City. And there are a lot of candidates and a lot of proposals on that ballot. But three of those specifically have to do with the City of Garden City. Yes. And they are charter amendments. Yes. Uh, thank you, Dan, for the opportunity to explain a little bit about what we're, what we're looking at. The charter for the city, which is generally the overall rules of the city itself, there's a, there's a number of things that need clarification and some things that need to be changed just outright. So the next few weeks from now, we're going to have an election. Uh, November's election will have three different amendments uh, that we're looking to change the charter. And I wanted to come in today and explain a little bit about what they are uh, entailing. So if people understand the city council can pass a resolution. The city council can pass an ordinance with a vote of five. But charter amendments and anything in the charter require a vote of the people, and that's why these are being put in front of the public. Yes, absolutely. And many of these things that are basically cleaning up the charter, I guess, yes. we ran into a couple of situations where you found holes in our charter, really, where things weren't covered, Yes. and that's how we got to this point, I think. Well, one of the concerns we always have to look at it as uh, administration for the municipality is uh, we have an answer to one question, but what if this happens? Sure. So we always have to be ready for a backup which is really what uh, two of these three amendments are all about. All right, let's go through the three amendments and then try to explain exactly what the intent is. The first one is proposed charter amendment number one, and it says it is proposed that sections 2.03 and 2.09 be amended to provide that when a mayoral vacancy is filled on a permanent basis by an election, the mayor pro tem, who acts as mayor on an interim basis, shall resume his or her council seat and that the person appointed by the council to replace the mayor pro tem on the council shall be a member of the council for a limited period of time during which the mayor pro tem is acting as mayor shall this proposed amendment be adopted clear ah. as mud that's that's absolutely <laughs> uh, vegetable soup right there a whole lot of words that that seem to, to add up to something basically what our objective there is is currently if the mayor pro tem uh, or any time in the future, steps into the mayor position. The way the charter's written, there is no way for them to step back. Correct. So they're helping out the city, stepping up to say, I'll be mayor interim until we have the next election. Well, but when the next election happens, if they still have two years on their seat, their time, they'd like to step back. Well, they cannot. So this is basically asking the people, do you believe it's okay for the mayor pro tem to step up to be mayor for a short time? And when that job is done, they can step back to the seat that they've been elected to. Now, they would only be able to stay for the time that they were elected for. They won't get extra time. But the idea is if you step up to help out the community and then you immediately lose your seat when a new mayor comes in, you kind of lost a couple of years sure. of time you were elected sure. for. So this uh, charter amendment number one is basically saying, do you believe it's okay for the mayor pro tem to step up and then go back to their seat where they originally started from? And where this became an issue is two things. A uh, charter amendment several years ago gave everyone on council a four-year term, yes. including the mayor. Yes. So in the case of our current mayor, had he left to uh, serve yes. in Lansing as a state representative, there would have been actually three years remaining yes. in the mayor's term, yep. which then if Mark Jacobs had stepped up to be the mayor for the one year, because then we would elect a new mayor at the next election, it wasn't yeah. really covered in the charter whether or not no. Mr. Jacobs could move back onto yes. council to finish his four years or whether or not he was done. Yes, he would have given up two more years, and I think most people would say that's the way the charter is written because it's not written. Right. It doesn't explain step two. So, right. which so may, that's what that is. Which may cause someone to not take the mayor's position because yeah. they don't want to lose their guaranteed four years on council. Absolutely. Yeah. Which brings us to our next charter <laughs> amendment proposal. <laughs> That one is pr uh, proposed charter amendment number two. Shall section 2.03 of the Garden City Charter be amended to provide that if the council member receiving the highest number of votes in the last general election is unable or unwilling to act as mayor pro tem during the absence or disability of the mayor or unable or unwilling to hold the office of mayor if a vacancy occurs, the council member who received the second highest number of votes in the last general election 
shall act as mayor pro tem during the absence or disability of the mayor and hold the office of mayor if a vacancy occurs. Again, yeah. uh, folks, these had to go in front of attorneys. These had to be approved by the state of Michigan yeah. and the secretary of state. Yeah. So that's why they become so wordy at times. Mm -hmm. But uh, what are we trying to accomplish All here? All right, so going back to charter number, uh, amendment number one is if that vice mayor or mayor pro tem steps up to that seat, uh, that works out okay, and then they can come back if we say yes to number one. Number two is, what if they're not able to step up? Sure. What if, say, there's a, a family crisis takes place for a mayor pro tem in the future, or work? You know, they can be on the council, they can make regular meetings, but they're not able to do all the extra duties of mayor. They just can't step up. The charter doesn't say anything about it. They're basically forcing the mayor pro tem to be the next right, mayor. Right, whether they want to be or not. Yeah, so this amendment number two says, if the mayor pro tem, current mayor pro tem, cannot step up, then who would step up in line would be the last person who got the most votes sure. from the last election. So basically, the time the mayor pro tem becomes the mayor pro tem, whoever came in second place, they would almost be the vice mayor pro tem. Sure. So this says to us now the answer is if a situation would have happened like we talked about this uh, this this fall would have happened where the mayor's vacant position would have become va vacant, the mayor pro tem would have stepped up. If they can't step up, who steps up in their place? So number two is basically saying let's have a backup to the backup. Just sure. the highest vote getter would be the backup to the vice mayor of Mayor Pro Tem to step up. Sure. And one of the things to clarify, too, in the past, only the top two finishers in each election had received four year terms. Now, all of the council people receive four year terms, but the terms are staggered, and we still have elections every two years. So, whoever is the top vote getter at the last election is the mayor pro tem. So even though you serve as mayor or you serve on the city council for four years, you're only mayor pro tem for two of those yes, terms. Absolutely. Uh, two of those years and then every two years there's a new yes. mayor pro tem. Yes. Okay. Yep. And our final one is propo a proposed charter amendment number three. And this one reads, shall section 2.06a of the Garden City Charter be amended to delete the meeting attendance compensation contingency for members of council other than the mayor and provide instead that such members of council shall receive a flat rate of compensation in the amount of $2,880 a year. Okay, so number three is not an increase to the council's pay. Okay. It's not a change in the council's pay. It's a change in the wording of how they're actually paid. Currently, they're paid at $60 a meeting that's regularly scheduled on the calendar. Correct. So if they have a workshop that just came up in the next week or two that was not on the original calendar, they aren't being paid for that meeting. So this is a way to basically say, there, let's have a flat fee of $2,800. The mayor's position, the reason it says other than the mayor, is in our charter, the mayor is paid a flat fee of $4,000 no matter what. The council is paid $60 a meeting. So coming to all the meetings would, could add up to $2,800. Sure. But also in that is we've got payroll that has to make sure was there a meeting last week or not a meeting last week. There's a lot more work to it than just having a flat fee. So number three charter amendment is to say instead of paying individual meetings, why don't we just come up with a flat fee of $2,800 as the mayor's being paid and just clean this part up. It's less staff time and it just makes sense that for every meeting the council would come to, they would be paid an automatic flat fee sure. for the year rather than was that meeting counted as a regular meeting or not a regular meeting and so on. Right. Now, I've, I've worked around the country a little bit here and, and the fees that we're paying the mayor and the council are about the lowest I think I've ever seen. Uh, and these numbers, by the way, just so everyone's aware, comes from 1985. Right. There's was not last been time, any change. Yeah, last time there was a charter revision and, and you look at what, 30 some years ago or so, sure. was this was what their salaries were. So I just don't want anyone to get confused thinking, well, they're just paying themselves a lot of money and, and what's happening. This is really just the way they're being paid, not how much the they're being paid. The amount is the same. Yes, and, and keep in mind, even for that amount of money of $2,800, you're talking about uh, several meetings a month, as well as preparation for those meetings per month. And every time you go to the grocery store, every time you're at the Little League fields, any time you're at home in the evening, the phone's going to ring by somebody, there's a lot of time put into being a council person. So although on one hand, it's very attractive to help the community and you make a couple of dollars, but it's really not just a volunteer position. There's a whole lot more time put sure. into it that takes away from their life and away from their family. So the $2,800, again, is not an increase in pay or, or a new pay. It's what they're getting paid. It's just how they're going to get paid. So, And on television, people see that the council meets two Mondays a month. Mm -hmm. uh, but often on those off Mondays, they have budget workshops. 
They have additional meetings if there's a, an issue that has to be addressed immediately yeah. and can't wait for the next scheduled meeting. The city council yeah. can have a special meeting. So they can have three, four, five meetings in a month. Yeah. And technically, they're only being paid for two of those. Well, I have a healthy distrust of government as it is. <laughs> Myself and, and people should in general to make sure that things are being done correctly. Uh, so this is one of those situations where people may look at three charter amendments, uh, a lot of crazy wording. There's something going on here that no one understands. It literally is as simple as it is. Charter amendment number one is to ask about the vice mayor or mayor pro tem when he steps up. Can he step back to a seat or her? Yes, uh, would seem to make sense, but it's not written that way. Number two is if that person can't step up, who should step up? That gives us the ability to come up with an answer who is the highest vote getter in the last election, second highest vote getter. And then the third amendment basically says instead of paying council individually for meetings, we pay a flat fee, still adds up to the same amount of money. There's not a lot of trickery in this at all. It's, it's pretty much trying to clean up the charter as it is now, basically more clarifying sure. rather than making changes to the charter is, is what these, these three amendments are about. And don't forget, you can read the entire ballot language on the city's website, gardencitymi.org forward slash vote. That's gardencitymi.org forward slash vote. The entire ballot is there, plus there are state ballot proposals, there's a Schoolcraft College ballot proposal, and of course all of the, uh, the candidates that are running for the various offices. And of course you can see the Meet the Candidates program that we recorded also online and on GCTV, but you can go to that website again, gardencitymi.org forward slash vote to see that. Thank you very much for spending time right. with us. Thank you. Appreciate and make sure that you do vote on November 6th. Thanks for watching. Thank you.